We have been told by all gaming mouse manufacturers that their wireless mice are lag free, but is that actually the case? Today we will cover some general issues that wireless mice have and we will also cover the two topics that have been quite talked about recently. And those are DPI deviation and idle delay. Optimum Tech made a video about DPI deviation and so did Board C. And I've been mentioning DPI deviation in my reviews for years and I did mention it also in a mouse gate video in 2020. But but the things I want to mention is that if you have three different super lights, all of those might have slightly different DPI. So there can be unit to unit specific variants, even if all of those have stock feet. And then also just using aftermarket feet can cause DPI deviation. To give you guys an idea about this, I actually ran some tests with a rig that I have. The tool basically consistently moves your mouse for about 10 centimeters. So I decided to check the DPI with Logitech G Pro X super light and glass feet, stock feet and core pad PTFE feet. And the average results do deviate quite a bit and of course the most accurate results you do get with the stock feet and the least accurate results are with super glides. In game this difference is still quite small and it's something that you can customize by changing your sensitivity. So there is always a workaround for DPI deviation and using thicker aftermarket feet can actually cause you much worse problems than just DPI deviation. But most of the time you will not get any issues that you would notice in game. But for the DPI deviation it's actually completely normal for your mouse to have some. Almost all mice have it and anything that has less than 5% deviation has pretty much no deviation in my book. Then for the idle delay issue and it exists only on mice that have a specific comp X MCU. But the issue is not really the MCU it's the firmware that these mice have. Which is one reason why most of these medium tier wireless mice have pretty much same looking drivers and same performance. For example from the new 3395 mice such as the Lamsu Atlantis, the Pulsar RX2 and the Fantech Aria, they all have the same MCU, uh, pretty much the same drivers, the same click latency and overall performance. And at this moment all of these mice suffer from the idle delay issue, so when you wait 5 seconds do not move your mouse at all, don't press any buttons and you click the mouse one button, you will get an additional 4 millisecond delay. 4 milliseconds is actually not that much, but when you consider that the click latency on these mice is already 4 millisecond, milliseconds. So at 4 milliseconds on top of that, then actually we have a number that's 8 milliseconds over the Death Star V3 Pro for example. And that 8 millisecond difference is something that you will for sure feel. I tweeted about this about a month ago when the Pulsar X2 had that massive 15 millisecond click latency after 5 seconds idling. And I tested a bunch of other mice as did tech power up and most mice seem to fall into that 4 to 6 milliseconds of additional idle delay. Now as this delay only applies when you hold your mouse completely still and do not click any buttons for 5 seconds, this is only an issue for CSGO and Valorant. And even in those games you do not necessarily run into these situations that often. I personally might run into a situation like this maybe like 4 to 5 times per match. But it's pretty much impossible for me to say that does the 4 milliseconds of additional click latency actually make any difference for me. I've been using the Lamsu Atlantis because I kinda want to test this and it's really hard to come up with real results because how many times those situations actually happen and how fast you need to react can change per situation of course. My thoughts at the moment are that in most situations the 4 milliseconds additional delay does not matter at all. But having said that, I also think that if I come from a Razer Ether V3 Pro at 4000Hz and switch to the Lamsu Atlantis and suddenly when I sit around with an AWP or in a pistol round I get that additional penalty, I suddenly have 18 milliseconds of end to end latency with my system compared to the 10 milliseconds that I would have with the Death Star V3 Pro and that's a difference that I will for sure feel and that can also ruin my click timing. If you want to get completely rid of the delay there are of course two workarounds so you can just move your mouse a little bit every time you're holding a corner in CSGO or actually you can open the driver software and have it running on the background but keep in mind that putting it on tray does not help so you need to have it, have it open on the background. This will get completely rid of the idle delay because your mouse will not go into any low power modes once your drivers are open. Then again of course you can get one of these mice that has no idle delay whatsoever so the Death Star V3 Pro has of course very low click latency and no idle delay at all. And same applies for the Logitech G Pro X Superlight. 
Even the Chibul's Hardy S4 case are most that has very, very low click latency and no idle delay at all. All of these mice have a Nordic MCU and a high-end Nordic MCU and a good wireless implementation should mean that your implementation would be solid and there would be no idle delay, for example. I also have some background info for you guys, so I know that the companies working with Compex and their MCUs are working on a solution for this. The new x 5 M8 is a mouse that has the Compex MCU and it will be the first mouse that will not have any idle delay issues. Lastly, I want to talk about wireless tech overall and I want to actually make some comments about this tweet that I made where I stated that if you are a TAC FPS player, you should only get a Razer or Logitech mouse. I will actually need to add something on top of that. So if you are a professional gamer or somebody who competes and travels to LAN tournaments and such, I would not recommend for you to get any other wireless mouse at the moment than Razer or Logitech. The main reason I limit these to professional players is because they play at LAN tournaments where there can be a lot of interference so the signal integrity and overall the reliability of the wireless tech is very very important. There are many things about these cheaper wireless mice that are not as well implemented as the Razer and Logitech mice and there are just many things that are hard to test and possibly many issues that have not been noticed yet. Even without any major issues I would still say that reliability is very very important if you are a professional gamer and any interest interruption or interference, for example, in an important situation in CSGO can make you lose many rounds or even the match. So I know I would not take the risk. But so let's get to the important question that our wireless gaming mice actually lack free. The results I show here are comparative motion latency results against the Zowie CA13C and basically the only wireless mouse that equals a wired mouse is the Razer Dether V3 Pro. Slightly behind that is the Hardy S Plus 4K and then we have the Dether V3 Pro at 1K and the super light. Then we basically have all the rest of wireless mice. So the Lam Zoo with motion sync on is at plus one millisecond. And so is the Pulsar X2 with motion sync off. But for some reason, the X2 and the Aria still seem to have that one millisecond penalty for enabling motion sync. The upcoming XM2 wireless has an STM MCU and I have a lot of faith on endgame gear, so I suspect their wireless implementation will be at least on the level of Logitech. So I would say that it's pretty fair to call these wireless mice lag free. Even 2 milliseconds in motion latency does not really make much of a difference in a game, but it still shows that for motion most wireless mice are not on the level of wired mice at this point. If you look at the motion latency chart one more time, the super light is less than 1 millisecond behind the CA13C. But for click latency, it's actually about 2.5 milliseconds faster. But what does lag free actually even mean? Does it mean that a wireless mouse should perform just as well as a wired one? Or does it just mean that the performance difference is so small that you should not be able to distinguish it in game? However you define it, I would say that the Razer mice at 4000 Hz and the Hardy S plus 4000 Hz are undeniably lag free and perform even better than most wired mice for click latency purposes. For wireless reliability and performance, Razer is just way ahead of every Everybody else at the moment. And although I've seen quite many people and even reviewers complain about the 4K dongle and its price, I myself would heavily recommend for you to get it, especially if you can get it for the 15 bucks with a discount code. It doesn't make sense to me as to why you would not want your wireless mouse to perform as good as a wired one. Even if you don't use your mouse at 4000 Hz, the dongle is larger, so it fits a larger antenna into it, and the signal integrity is actually better with this than it is with any other dongle. And actually, this 4K dongle gets Let's read off these random one millisecond delays that can happen with wireless mice. Those should not cause you any issues, but basically the 4K dongle is a cheat code in the sense that your wireless mouse will be pretty much wired. The single integrity improvement is something that I would heavily recommend for professional gamers to have if they are using a Razer mouse. I suspect that because of the performance improvements and the shape of the Dethera V3 Pro, we will see a lot of Valorant and CSGO players switch this one in the future. Do not worry about idle delay or DPI deviation that much, and if you are a professional gamer, do not use a wireless mouse or use a Logitech or Razer one.